the last presenter uh, is Louis. Uh, is Louis and Louis is an international researcher in branding, and I think some of you have joined the survey earlier. So, many of you have participated in the survey. Oh yeah, good. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's going to show us some findings. So let's welcome Louis. All right, I I'm going to stand up if you don't mind. All right. Uh, perfect. So that's it. Today uh, we're going to see uh, the results of this. Um, ambitious project uh, that I conducted in June this year with the amazing support from ICOM NPR, amazing for support from um, NPR members in Brazil, Lucimara, Barbara and Deborah, and also with uh, the support of uh, several um, national committees such as ICOM Brazil, ICOM Canada, uh, also represented here, and the general idea of this survey was to understand, Lucimara told us um, earlier today that the museum definition, it's a vision, it's uh, uh, somewhere that we want to go to. With this survey, I, I'm trying to raise some data for us to understand how far are we from that vision. A general overview of the um, sampling profile. I'm gonna rush into the d data. Don't 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 feel threatened. We can talk about uh, the details later. Anyway, so this is the third survey of a series of museum branding um, surveys that I've been conducting. Um, the first one was in 2008, and it was made by Robert Jones um, from uh, Wolf Hollings. Uh, so I retook this. Um, model in 2014, the second survey, and now the third um, this year with 406 uh, submissions. The survey was available in English, Portuguese, and Spanish, making it more um, accessible to people everywhere. And now we're going to see, uh, I merged the results and we're going to see in this report today. Most participants were from uh, Latin America, of course, we're huge as you know, um, uh, following by Europe and the US and Canada. However, since this um, survey is an open survey, it's an online survey, people from anywhere can join it. You cannot much control uh, where people are coming from, but some surprises occurred, such as the great participation from Mexico, from Argentina, from Latvia, Slovenia and Iran for all, all places. It was great surprise. We had a great participation also from senior management, which is good for us here in this case, um, especially museum directors, curators, uh, communications and marketing managers, meaning uh, people in our organizations that have the power, that have uh, de decision makers or can influence uh, those uh, decisions. And here's um, the, the problematic um, point of this survey. This question was the highest dropout question. In a survey, the dropout is when people get into the survey and it goes away for some reason. My reading of this um, was what we can consider on the third order. When we try to bring museums nowadays into a specific box, they don't see to, seem to fit in. That's what the other uh, supposed to me. So in the last survey, other represented 27% uh, of the participants, now 14, but it shows the level of diversity and how museums nowadays are actually what they choose to be. Uh, most of the partic participants were uh, from public institutions, medium-sized museums, from the post-war era, 32%, or the sum of the museums created from 2000 on, also 22% if we merge them together. Let's go to the branding issues. That's the great part of the survey. First thing that we asked was the museums to position themselves, right? And those 31% in the last survey was 
are the ones that uh, identify um, themselves as huge potential, but largely unknown. We are from communications and marketing. We know what this is all about, right? Uh, it's the understanding that uh, we are great, we are fantastic, we are super cool, and people will rush into our doors if they only knew we are there. Meaning the problem is always outside, not inside. Right? Okay, moving on. Uh, what uh, branding means to those museums. And here we start to see uh, some of the problems that we, we have to face from now on. So for 40% of museums, branding is just a guide to do stuff, whatever. Publication or social media, whatever they want to do, exhibition, whatever, is just a mere guide to do stuff. Only 26% of them understands branding as they should be a great strategy too. For 25% uh, of uh, senior management are not into branding or not into branding at all. 4% understands branding as a dirty word still, and that's quite similar to the result that we had in the previous um, survey in 2014. I want you to keep this number in your head from now on, those 40% that under, that of museums that have a clear or define and recognize brand. And we're going to merge those other two and see the size of the problem we have ahead. So those 40% that have the brands are clear and recognized are what we can call healthy brands. Let's use that term from now on, healthy brands. Those other 60% have many brand issues. Either the values are not clear or not recognized. And we know what this represents in our daily activities. And those branding issues are also related to this, the mission. And the mission is where the new definition lies in our, um, have it housed in our, in our museums. To know about a museum mission, I believe, is the very thing, maybe the only truly thing that the staff should know. And I will ask you this. How many of you work in a museum and know your museum mission word by word? Not an interpretation, not a remix, not some fuzzy understanding word by word. How many of you? None? <laughs> wow, this is worse than I thought. But it's not exactly a surprise. Most of our museum missions look like this. And you don't have to understand what is written, because we don't. Even when we know the language, we, know, we cannot understand what is written. Because we have this tendency to put too many words to embrace the word and mean nothing. In practical terms, what we have here is, the, remember those 40%, you have them in mind, the, those healthy brands, they're here. They're the ones who understand the role of the mission as a guide for everything the museum does. While for 21%, the mission is something generic, little impacting the daily activities, or the staff have no idea what the mission is, or they don't have a mission at all, right? So again, let's merge them together and see the size of the problem. So for 40% of museums have today mission problems, generic, not share, or no statement. This is the job. This is our job. This is our commitment to those institutions. So we're really dealing here with a huge problem, and I believe that what the, the main uh, challenge that we have now as professionals from NPR is to, after the definition, the new definition, is to go back to our museums and bring this question and, 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 and create conversations about it. And the manifesto probably, I believe, is the first step that we can take right now to take action. Yeah. 
Yeah. The problem is, we are getting used to the idea, we are getting comfortable to this idea that the mission can guide some of what the museum does. Like we could be, uh, um, let's say, comfortable with the idea of half transparency, of half ethics. That doesn't work. Either it's one thing or the other. But we kind of accept this idea of guiding some of the museum. Let's say, the, for instance, is your museum audience focused and community oriented? So you have an education department. And the education department is the only one who's doing something for the community. And you ask the museum director, is your uh, museum audience focused? Of course we are. We have this. It's settled, it's, it's done. But that's not enough. Because what you get here is this idea of sometimes. Sometimes we are, sometimes we are not. Or, let's go further, and our programs are reflects inclusiveness and diversity, sometimes, and we're good with this. Decolonization, sometimes. How can it be? Either you are or you're not, right? But here's the thing, and here's the key thing that I want you to keep in mind and, and, and open conversations with your own um, colleagues in your institutions. The answer to the question that I propose, are we there yet? Are our museums up and ready to the new definition? Halfway at best. This is the best case scenario that we have. And if you ask me, I will say, no, that's not even it. I will keep myself, I will keep in mind those 40% of healthy brains. That's where we are. That's where I believe we are right now. At best, 40% in this, this long journey to what Lucimara called a vision, the place that we want to go to. What I did, uh, I got some uh, keywords from the new definition, and I proposed people to say, um, what of, which of those keywords are currently in your museum mission, or what should we put on um, a new, um, in a new mission if you chose to change it? So what we have here is basically um, what we have in um, the museum's mission is the classic keywords from the previous definition. Education, collecting, conservation, exhibition, research. Communities is what we can call um, recent acquisition in our collection. They're a, a recent phenomenon from, let's say, the past 20 years. But accessibility, participation, inclusiveness, or sustainability, ethics, equity, we're still so far from it. But let's say um, we understand this. What should we do? Should we rewrite or redefine our museum mission? I think it's a good idea. I think that's, what, that's, that's the job. That's what we should do from now on when we got from this conference taking this good news of a new definition ahead to our institutions. And if you do, what would you include in your museum mission? That's great. So. Participation, inclusiveness, uh, accessibility, diversity, sustainability, all those good things. But interesting to, um, to see on, on the data is that on that question, we've, we had 402 answers. And now only 222, half of the participants. What that tells us, that even when you create a, a, a mental exercise of bringing the idea of change, people are still struggling with the idea. Change is not really that easy for us. Even when it's on a mental universe that there's no relationship with the reality itself, it's still hard for us to, to embrace it. And it's, for me, what really... Um, took my attention is how equity was the last on the list. 
And for me, this is the path. This is how we can really create change. This is the word, the key word that we can uh, go to this place that uh, Lucimara told us, this, this vision, this place that we, we want to go to. So now that's the fun part of the presentation. So we, um, I also asked um, the participants to choose three museums that they admire the most, right? So not the best museums, the best collections, the best buildings, just museums that they, they love, they, they admire. And they could choose three of them. And for me, again, when we, we talked about the other, um, uh, the diversity of museums. We also have a great diversity of, of um, museums selected here. Over 400 um, museums were appointed as um, museums that people love. And let's, let's see if you can choose what, which was the number one museum appointed by our participants. The museum they admired the most. Any any ideas? Oh, that's a very good one now. Any other, any other guess? Yeah, Selka. Uh, the, the who? The who? There you go. Good choice. Good choice. That num was the number one choice uh, on the first choice and on the second choice. They, they're doing a great job, aren't they? Yeah, totally agree. Museum number two, the second. Who? Smithsonian? No. Any, any other guess? MoMA. MoMA. Perfect. Right on, start. But right on spot. MoMA. MoMA on the last survey was uh, number one. And now it's number two. And the third? British? Tate. 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 Now nah, the man. Come on, the Matt did a great rebranding too. Those guys are good. Anyway, and here's a, is a list of the um, many other um, part of the, the many other museums that were appointed. Um, and your museum may be here in this list. Who knows? So anyway, thank you. My question's a little bit frivolous. Have you seen the the, ROM, the Royal Ontario Museum's new branding exercise and uh, campaign? And I wondered what you thought of it. I didn't. I, I'm super fan of the ROM. Um, I loved, especially the, the social media work that they did in the past with Ryan when he was working there. Um, and I thought about that when you were doing your presentation. Uh, remember uh, that he put um, the T-Rex of their collection on Tinder? That was great. <laughs> the new one has been in the subway. Really? Yeah. Wow, I have to check that. Thank you. The wrong Royal Ontario Museum. While I'm walking over there, I have to say, Sue the T-Rex is my, <laughs> is, my, is my hero, heroine at the Field Museum in Chicago. She has a Twitter account of her own. Thank you, Luis Marcelo. That was a very good presentation. I do agree about the review of the mission. What I would like to ask you is, um, because I find it very important to communicate it to the workers so that they can also communicate it. Could you give us some tips to do that, to improve that? First, make it short, make it understandable, and, and share with it. Share with the, yourself, make it, and make it real. That's the main thing. It doesn't, it really doesn't work if you say something. For instance, uh, Matia just mentioned the Wright Museum. They have a great mission, short, simple, and they live up to it. That's what we should be doing. And that's why we have so many, let's call, unhealthy brands, because they're not 
doing the, the basic job. And once again, when I talk about ah, museums, they're not doing their job, we have to push this agenda forward. That's our responsibility from us here in this, in this room to raise awareness of that issue and, and how when you have a shared mission that everyone understands and, and are, are aligned with, you save money, you save time, you save effort, and you make your uh, institution go in the positive right direction, and it's good for you and your audience and your patrons and so on, all your stakeholders. Okay. Okay, thank you all for all the participations. It was a wonderful afternoon. And let's give a big hand to our four wonderful presenters. <laughs>